Welcome to another session with Green World Group. And today's topic is personal protective equipment, also known as PPE. So there's a lot we can cover here uh, in terms of PPE, but I'll try squeezing as, as much information as possible. But if you feel like taking the full course with us, feel free to come by uh, Green World Group and join us there. Well, Let's run through a few pictures here. I know, yes, uh, we, we see this around the world. We see this in, on Google. Maybe uh, you can find this on Epic Fails um, on YouTube. But as you can see, uh, this man is wearing, protecting his face with a bag of plastic. I don't know how he's trying to uh, breathe, but there you have it. Take a look at this, protecting his face also. As you can see, so what we have to understand here that it's in our human nature to protect ourselves. Yes, but what we lack is financial. Uh, we lack financially. We lack supervision, and we lack training. Right. So, who provides us with this? Well, it's supposed to be uh, our employees, uh, sorry, our employers uh, who must provide us with this. Uh, they must do the adequate uh, um, study of the workplace uh, to, in, to understand what is hazardous, what are the procedures, um, and what would cause uh, injury, illness, and fatalities to these workers, right? Again, the employer must uh, follow the hierarchy of control to eliminate these hazards uh, or substitute them. But our last and final line of defense comes down to PPE, our personal protective equipment. So our last line of control. Now under OSHA, um, the rules and regulations for personal protective equipment standard comes down to this, uh, saying that our employer must provide at no cost um, employees with PPE, right? Um, so that they can be protected against uh, related injuries as well as illnesses and fatalities. So in more description, uh, our hierarchy of control relies on our first, very first step is to eliminate, right? Try removing the hazard entirely. But most of the times that's not possible. So we will result to the next step, which would be replace the hazard, with substitution or replacing it. Then that, after that, we go towards engineering controls, try to ask, isolate the people from the hazard, right? Um, then further on, change the way the people work, right? An administrative control, decrease their duration, decrease their exposure. Um, and finally, comes down to protecting the workers with personal protective equipment. That is for them, right, in the line of work. So again, elimination, substitution, engineering control, administration controls, and then finally PPE. Our topic here is only about PPE. Um, we'll try squeezing in as much information as we can. Again, this is only introductory. Uh, if you want, you can join us with the full group uh, for training uh, with the Green World Group. Now, establishing an PPE program is very essential. We must set our procedures in selecting and providing uh, PPE on, um, on routine operations. Excuse me. Um, first, assess the workplace to determine um, what are the present uh, hazards there. Uh, then associate the necessary PPE accordingly. All right? And once the proper PPE has been selected, the employer must provide trainings to each employee so that they understand the value of the PPE as well as how to use it and how it will protect them. Right now, um, when we determine between uh, the hazards, we must first uh, identify what category of hazard they are. Are they physical hazards? Uh, and physical hazards would be usually require um, are associated to um, falling objects, sharp objects, electrical uh, hazards, slip trips and falls, uh, harmful dust, uh, rolling and pinching objects. This is um, just to name a few. Uh, again there might be more, there are more. And then comes down to uh, health hazards uh, that are present in the workplace. Health hazards such as um, chemical hazards, biological hazards, 
uh, nuclear radiation. Again, so just to name a few. Uh, right now, uh, the world is going through a pandemic uh, caused by the, um, the COVID-19. Um, so that is what? That is a biological hazard, right? Uh, again, it's, it's a virus that's being transmitted. And our PPE against that is uh, face masks, right? Because the route of entry here is inhalation, right? Uh, not only just inhalation, but also um, ingestion. As well. So let's look into the parts of body that PPE uh, would cover. So we have uh, eyes that we need to protect with safety glasses and uh, and goggles. Uh, we have faces um, that we need to be protected. Um, let's say face shields. The, if we're uh, welding, uh, if we're doing so, such activities, um, then we have our head, uh, which we need to protect with uh, hard hats from falling objects and so on. Um, then we have our feet, we can protect with safety shoes, uh, with steel toe boots, to be more precise, uh, which we will also explain further. Uh, and then our hands and arms, gloves, appropriate gloves, um, could be chemical resistant, could be impact gloves, and so on. Um, again, we will exp explain more. Uh, and then we have our body, the whole body that we need to protect. So we have uh, vests, we have full body suits, but not only that, what about from falling from heights? Uh, we can have uh, full body harnesses as well, right? Um, and then we have hearing, uh, our ears that we need to protect. We can protect them with uh, earplugs, uh, ear muffs, right? Uh, and so on. Uh, but what I've not mentioned there, what about our breathing, right? Um, and we can protect our breathing by either having an SCBA or SABA, uh, breathing apparatuses, right? Um, and other variants of that. So selection and provision of the PPE. Once your area has been uh, assessed, uh, your employer must select uh, with your help, obviously the employees uh, must take part in this because they're the ones working, um, they're the ones who know the ground reality and they're the ones who will be working. Um, so the appropriate PPE and the equipment to be used uh, while performing the job. So at the employer's cost. Then uh, in addition to providing you with PPE, the employer must maintain the PPE uh, used by the employees. Uh, in most cases, the employees themselves will be uh, maintaining that and, um, and inspecting it to ensure that uh, it's still adequate um, and it hasn't crossed its expiry or it hasn't been damaged. Um, and if the PPE cannot be re uh, repaired, then it should be discarded and a new one should be allotted to that employee. Um, your employer must maintain those records uh, in the workplace to assess your training as well, right? So why train? Why, why are we going through these trainings? Um, well, employees are required to use PPE and they should be trained. Why? Because knowledge improves uh, process, right? So once we have an idea of why we're wearing this, uh, which everybody realizes that uh, we need to protect ourselves because our human body parts are very, are not replaceable, right? Um, and yeah, so when the PPE is necessary uh, and what type of PPE is necessary according to task specific jobs um, and how, how we properly put them on or take them off or adjust them and wear them. Again, there are limitations to PPE. Yes, in some places, uh, PPE can go against us. Uh, like in confined spaces, uh, in uh, hot environments and confined spaces, our PPE can get drenched or can get even heavier uh, and so on. Uh, and then how do we care for them properly, maintain them, and then uh, make the full use out of their life and uh, realize when they're expired and when to dispose of them. This is all in the thorough training that should be provided by employ employers to their employees. Again, you are responsible. Are we employees are responsible for attending these PP uh, PP trainings and sessions? Um, we should be wearing these uh, as assigned by our employers. All right? um, we must follow their uh, warnings and precautions, and we must listen and follow those directions. Again, uh, if we do have a shortage of PP, or if, uh, if you require PP, then we must report. Um, as quickly as possible, yeah. 
So let's get into face and eye uh, protection. As you can see in the image itself, uh, we must understand the severity of uh, damaging ourselves um, by not providing ourselves with uh, the proper protection that we require while we're working. So this is one of the very clear examples of why we must protect our eyes and face. Right? There could be uh, flying objects, there could be debris uh, that can harm us very quickly. So you can see normal glasses uh, wouldn't suffice that well. Um, and even after wearing safety glasses, there is a tendency of them uh, rupturing through uh, and making their way into our eyes. Right? So here are a few uh, different variants of different uh, safety glasses available in the market. Again, be very task specific. Uh, they do have face shields, um, sorry, they do have side shields um, on these, right, which are adequate in protecting our eyes from the side as well. So these are usually made with uh, metal or plastic, but they are never, or they should never be made with glass. Uh, why? Because glass has a tendency of cracking going inwards, which will cause more, da more damage to us. Um, most, so most of them uh, do have the side shields, right, for extra protection there. Uh, again, right, so again, we can use these for different types of jobs, just to name a few, carpentry, uh, woodworking, grinding, scaling, right, just to name a few. Now, let's go in towards goggles. You can see the different variants there. Uh, what these are really beneficial against are um, splashes, chemicals. Right, um, something or even um, uh, dust or debris uh, that could uh, find its way through gaps. So, well, goggles really fit the eye sockets uh, and prevent them from going in. All uh, right, so we we have uh, dust and splashes in consideration to these. Then uh, many of these are designed in such a way that if you are wearing prescription glasses, um, then you can wear the the uh, the goggles on top of them, right? Now let's get into towards hearing protection. Uh, we must protect our hearings as well. Uh, again, we protect our ears today and we can have use of them later on in the future, right? But if we do not protect them now, then uh, we might have a chronic problem with them, right? So how does this work? Uh, again, our eardrums are very sensitive. Um, but we must understand uh, that our ears have two major functions. Uh, one, yes, everybody knows uh, here, ears provide us with hearing, we can hear things. But the second important function of our ears is also that uh, it provides us with balance. So we walk straight, right? Um, keep that in mind. So uh, According to OSHA, the, um, the average decibel of, uh, of uh, noise that we can, um, we can hear is anything below 85 decibels, but anything beyond that is harmful for us. And now it comes down to the exposure of how long we can uh, be exposed to it. So we have the noise thermometer. Uh, again, so slight whispers could come up to maybe maximum 30 decibels. Uh, anything beyond that, uh, jump towards uh, 85 is, um, uh, would require us to protect our ears, right? Um, and again, I can explain all this later on too. So just to get you guys the uh, idea of uh, how noise uh, can affect us. Uh, different types of protectors. We have ear muffs, we have ear uh, plugs, we have uh, canal caps as well. Now, let's get in towards head injuries. Now, um, there are a lot of sources of uh, head injuries, but most of the times it's things that are falling from above us. Right? Uh, we're not going to constantly be looking up while we're walking, but uh, in order for us to uh, protect ourselves, we must wear adequate protection, such as uh, hard hats. Right? So our biggest problem here comes down to falling objects, uh, bump against uh, fixed objects, um, maybe overhead uh, um, hazards. Right? Now, usually uh, we humans make excuses in terms of saying that, oh, we don't really need a hard hat, uh, I won't be staying long. Well, that's where accidents is really occur. It's when we're least expecting it, even for like saying for five few minutes, oh, I'm just gonna walk in, walk out. Doesn't work like that. We must protect ourselves, even for visitors as well. 
uh, there are solutions and we must implement uh, the safety, which is for all. For all. So um, the hard hats, um, there are different variants of them. Uh, again, uh, most important part about the hard hat is the webbing uh, inside it, um, which gives you a decent amount of gap. So if something does fall on it, there is a shock absorption uh, that could occur and it won't hit you directly and won't cause con um, con um, won't cause uh, uh, concussions, right? Uh, severe injuries to your head, right? So different types of protections here, we've classified them and depending on their strength, uh, as well as um, electric uh, voltages uh, and their uh, amount of shock they can take. So we have class A, um, this provides you with at least 2,000 to 2,200 uh, volts of protection. Uh, anything uh, above that would require class B, uh, which would go up to uh, 20,000 volts. Um, then comes class C, which is just basic uh, falling objects. And then we have bump caps, uh, which uh, is a very lightweight plastic, um, could wear, could be worn as a cap. Uh, again, um, the severity of uh, maybe the hazards of falling objects is very minimum there, uh, but we still need to protect our hats, the heads, just to be just to be safe. So there are tests done. Um, as you can see in one of this image, uh, we've tested out, uh, well, the Air Force has tested out hard hats in such a way that uh, they can uh, watermelons. So even the watermelons are quite uh, weak to the human head, but still the study was done uh, with wearing one with, um, with a helmet and full, with full protection, you can see the image itself. Um, we must properly inspect our hard hats. Now, if there is a damage that has occurred, uh, you must immediately report and replace it uh, with a new one. But not only that, um, our hard hats also have an expiry. Um, there is uh, an expiry on each and every hard hat uh, available. So over time, um, their uh, ability to res uh, resist uh, damage uh, will decrease. So we must um, we must replace them as as they would. Right. Now uh, our hands need protection as well. We're constantly using our hands to do the job. Um, so estimated almost twenty percent of all disabling uh, accidents are involved with uh, hands. Right. Our jobs that involve uh, our hands. Uh, without our fingers uh, or our hands, uh, our ability to work will be greatly reduced. Right? We constantly need our fingers to either uh, our hands to grab things, to hold things, um, to work with. Right? So they need to be protected, right? Such as jobs like grinding or sharpening, right? Uh, we must protect our hands because there could be debris that can fall onto it or create serious burns, bruises, abbreviations, um, cuts, punctures, fractures, um, even playing out uh, limb cuts as well as chemical exposures, right? So we must protect our hands with our task specific gloves uh, that uh, would protect us from, uh, from that uh, line of work. Right. You can see impact gloves, you can see uh, grinding gloves, uh, you can see uh, maybe Kevlar uh, gloves as well. So again, here are a few. Uh, resistant against sharp edges that prevents cuts. Uh, we have uh, shield your hands with rough surfaces. We have uh, toxic or chemical resistant gloves. Uh, we have electrical uh, resistant gloves, right? Um, we have padded gloves, uh, we have heat resistant gloves, we have latex for medical uh, or for protecting us from germs and bacteria, uh, and so on. But now let's get towards our foot, foot protection. Our feet also need uh, protection, right? So the human foot is a very rigid, um, uh, is very rigid enough that it supports our whole weight and then our, own, our entire body's weight, right? Uh, and then it's flexible enough for us to either walk and run, uh, dance, play sports, uh, make us go anywhere we want, right? Uh, but without our feet or toes, our ability to work uh, will be greatly reduced. So they do need protection a lot. Uh, here's a simple case study uh, in that aspect. 
So this man, uh, this employee was uh, mowing the lawn and a lawnmower went over it, even though he was wearing uh, his um, safety shoes, which had a, a steel toe. Uh, as you can see in the image, the steel toe itself uh, was chucked out and um, saving his, his toes. So this is just a clear uh, near miss incident uh, where no harm was done, but yet reportedly um, this protects his toes. So yes, uh, we don't understand the magnitude of how uh, these will save us, but when they do, we do appreciate it. So it's better to protect ourselves when uh, we are doing serious jobs. Uh, there is a risk of, that, um, of injuries uh, when we are on the job. So, but not just that, we have uh, impact injuries. We have uh, injuries from spills, splashes of chemical uh, that could be acidic uh, to our toes or shoes, right? Um, then we have um, compression injuries um, that could be maybe heavy machinery equipment or objects that can roll over our feet, um, the, right? Uh, crush or break our bones. Then we have electric shocks. Um, that can arise, maybe we have uh, extreme heat, cold, uh, moisture uh, that uh, we, can, um, we can face. Uh, not only that, but slipping, uh, right? So there's oil, there could, uh, we can slip against water, we can slip from foam, soap, uh, wax, and so on, and even chemicals. Uh, but when we talk about foot protection, we must also consider um, a very important engineering control, which is uh, housekeeping, right? Uh, which is part of everyone's job to maintain um, maintain uh, a clean environment and prevent uh, slips, trips, and falls uh, from occurring uh, in these walkways, right? So different types of shoes, uh, safety shoes. We have steel toe footwear. We have uh, we have um, guards that could be uh, put on to um, to uh, to normal casual shoes. Right, which I will go over as well, uh, different variants of them. Uh, then we have um, uh, we have uh, shoes that can protect us from uh, foot from punctures. Right. Uh, then we have latex and rubber uh, shoes that protects us from chemicals, not just that, but also slippery surfaces, um, uh, and so on. Right. Uh, there are different variants of uh, different shoes. Again, we must understand uh, the activity that we are trying to do and, uh, and plan accordingly uh, with the appropriate PP that would protect us. So here are the uh, different variants for, uh, for shoes uh, um, attachments that we can use for, um, for people who um, maybe uh, wore casual shoes, usually in most cases, uh, visitors uh, who've come in uh, to visit the place um, and they can protect their shoe, uh, their, uh, their toes with the appropriate guards, right? Now let's go in towards full body protection. So um, we are, we would require coveralls, uh, we would require full body suits, uh, depending on the hazard, but now uh, these are, um, uh, these are hazards that might be caused through um, to asbestos or chemicals or um, hazardous atmospheres uh, that our body would fully be uh, protected against. Uh, not only that, um, but uh, but others as well, right? Even going into confined spaces, we're dealing with very toxic chemicals. We're dealing with maybe acidic chemicals, uh, airborne uh, um, hazards, right? and so on. So all in all, uh, our employers must implement a PPE program where they have assessed the workplace from their hazards, first identify the hazards uh, in the area, apply engineering control, again, fire, follow the hierarchy of controls, right? try eliminating, try substituting, it, try applying an engineering control over it, try uh, applying an administrative control over it, and then finally uh, apply the PPE that is best suited for that job, right? And then so close. Uh, with no cost to the employer. Um, as we have seen previously or in the very beginning where these employees were, um, were it was human nature for them to protect themselves. Uh, but what they lacked was financial supervision as well as training, right? So it, we always do have the need to protect ourselves, but what we lack is those three things, which the employer must provide, right? Um, so uh, again, Thank you very much uh, and for being a part of uh, this short uh, webinar.
Uh, my name is Vasir Shwak Ahmed, and for the full course training, feel free to come join us at the Green Road Group. Thank you very much.